January the 10th, 1945, when Bob Bright climbed into the gun turret of his 23rd mission. A short time later, at 25,000 feet, Bob was donning his parachute to jump from the burning plane. Of the nine crew members, only three survived. Bob was captured and spent the next six months in a German prisoner of war camp. General George Patton and his troops liberated the camp, and Bob came home. I had the privilege and honor to talk with Bob Bright and another World War II veteran, Jack Roach. This is Bob's story. I went in 1943 in, uh, in the Air Force and uh, went through different uh, branches at that time. They were shifting around, but I wound up with the 8th Air Force in England flying B and B-17s and uh, we're doing most of our missions in Germany. And I was on my 23rd mission when I got shot down over Germany. Okay. So, so Bob, did you say you flew some missions, Jack, with the 8th? We flew one, while I was with them, we flew one combined mission with the 8th Air Force, and that was the one trying for Germany. And that's the one you were in, isn't it? I was in the 8th, right. I was flying out of England. Okay. And uh, I got shot down on the 23rd mission. And I spent the rest of my time in Germany. So you, if you got 25 missions, you were done? Yeah. You got to go back home? Yeah, it varied. Sometimes it was 25, then kept increasing to 30. But it all depends on yeah. what the situation was. Right. <laughs> How many people they had. Yeah, that's right. If they had enough flight crew, you'd borrow it. Um, you were telling me one time that the, they had so many people flying, they had so many planes flying that by the time you reached the target, there were still people taking off. There were that, still planes taking that's off. That's great. We put up 2,500 B-17s. The first one would be bombing the target, and the last one would be leaving in. Man. All day long. 2,500 planes in the air. Yeah. And then, and then after you bomb the target, return back, what, uh, did you wait till the next morning or did they load right up and say, catch a nap and take off again? No, you were, they were scheduled missions and sometimes you'd fly the next day, sometimes it might be a week. It would depend on the weather. Right. That's what control okay. most of it. But if it was a good weather, you flew usually every day. Not the same crew, but the units flew every day, yeah. And what was your, um, uh, what, what was generally our, what was your targets? What were your targets? Mostly was uh, manufacturing plants, aircraft factories, and uh, it got to where it was, wasn't much left, we just bombed whatever we could find. Uh, what was your job on the plane? I was a ball turret gunner, bottom of the plane. And what was the life expectancy of those guys in those positions? Well, it depends on how, uh, how many people were shooting at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how many people did you have on the plane? Nine. Nine. And how about that with yours, Jack? Was that the same? Just about the same. We had, uh, yeah, about the same. Because we had about the same. We had a ball gunner, <coughs> we had a tail gunner, we had two waist gunners. Uh, and we had a, they kind of eliminated them at towards the end. Yeah. Did um, Bob? Did y'all have the same thing of when you got to a certain point, you didn't have any fighter support, or were there fighters flying with you? Fighters would fly in until they they would fly as far as they could because they start uh, flight on on the group of bombers, and they would. Uh, Situated then where they, you'd fly someday and sometimes it wasn't. It would just depend on the weather mostly, but what control the missions. Now, flight, that was a shell that was designed to explode, explode. in the air. Right. And then, 
Before you got to the target, the sky would be just black. And Hello? I'm in church. I'll be on in a few minutes. Yeah, Betty? Yeah, uh huh. Betty's checking on it. <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, it would it depend on what it, at the targets were for the day. And, some would hit one light target, one hit the other. But anyway, it was all briefed on before we left the base. All right, so that day, your 23rd mission. 23rd. What time of day was it you took off? We took off about, oh, I guess, 7.30 at the start. In the morning or at night? Eight. About 7.30, 8. Nine, in the evening or in the morning? Morning. We didn't fly in the oh, fly night. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how far into the flight was it before uh, before you started seeing Okay. You, you start picking up German fighters. It depends on when, uh, after you cross the channel, hit France, and then as the Ground troops went into France and it kept backing up to the boundary of Germany before you had to pick up. But uh, most of the time, your fighters would be mostly all around the target that you would go bomb that day. Now, what year was this? 1943. 43? Yeah. And, um, 44 or 45. Okay, and what year was it that you got shot down? 1945. 45. So yeah. that was not January 10th, 1945. Um, and you were flying in and along about France and at somewhere along the line of France you start picking up fighters and then you start picking up the flak. Right. Flak would be, by the time you get over the target it would be just solid black from uh, explosions up in the from air. From the 88th millimeter. Right. Um, how high were you? How, we were flying probably 23, 25,000. Okay. Yeah, that range. And uh, what happened on this particular flight? Well, we were, we were on the bomb run and uh, we got in the way of some 88 millimeter flight and it shot our plane down. Okay. And then uh, the plane blew up completely. So. All right, well, you were in the plane and the and the, the flag blew up. What what did you first notice that hey we got a problem here and I got to get out of here? I could see the holes in the plane. All right. And uh, then you could you know it's flag because there's a lot of exploding around anyway. Yeah. But uh, you knew it was time to you could look out and see the plane's in bad shape and it's time to get out of it. It's just good. So what, what was your training to do when something like that came up? Get out of the aircraft. Well, and the first thing to do was uh, at that altitude. Yeah, I could get over, slip over a parachute and go to the door and jettison it open. Okay. If it get it ready for you to bail out. You had to have oxygen at that height, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> we had oxygen. Yeah. And uh, of course I had walk around bottles on which were small. And and of course, all that blew off when you bailed out. So. Right. But it was, uh, and once you got, I guess, seven, eight thousand feet, what did Jackie went on oxygen? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. yeah. Well, so so you had the oxygen on. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Were you in the in the turret in the tail gunner turret when you saw that there were holes in the planes? And no, I had gotten out of the, out of the turrets. And we were trying to get the crew out. We were trying to jump the doors. And they were all frozen. It was just, it was just a round robin experience. It was, things don't work out like they do on a boat. Right, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, six of us 
six of them were killed. Three of them got out. Uh-huh. And you jumped out. It, it, it's just, it, it's interesting to me to think you're, you're 25,000 feet in the air and you're looking around and see holes in the plane, but you're still standing on, you know, you're standing on the floor of the plane, it's solid, but you're 25,000 feet in the air. You know that if I don't get out of here, uh, that you think about getting out of you about where you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you don't want to bail out too uh, high because it's oxygen and then it, it's cold up there. And yeah. You can blow zero or something. So to get, when you jumped out, you had to, there was no rip cord or anything like that. You had to pull the. Pull the hand along the chute. That's right. Did you have any problems with that? No, I had my hand on it all along. Yeah. But sometimes I had trouble with, with parachutes not opening. You know. Right. But that's one thing you wanted to check when you got, before you got on flight, which is about your equipment. So it and was. You swapped chutes, didn't you? Yeah, I swapped. Sometimes that pen is, it doesn't take much for it to kind of hang up in there when you open the chute. Right. So we wanted to inspect that pretty good. I did anyway. But I did get a new chute, yeah. It right. worked. So your chute opened, and I guess flak was still going on all the way. Oh, around. yeah. You could see the, fire. the sky was full of B 17. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. Well, when you landed, where did you land? I landed in a. I guess it was a row crop field. I didn't really pay that much attention to it, but all I, was, I just wanted to get hit the ground and get out of that parachute. But uh, it wasn't long before somebody out there get me. You, you told me in the past that there were some little boys that came along. Yeah, a bunch of children. We got they were eight, ten, twelve years old. You have the youth, and they were worse than the soldiers. <laughs> They had been well indoctrinated by the Germans. But they, uh, after oh, 30 minutes, I guess, they had that plan. Then the German soldiers used the Gestapo came out and picked us up. Yeah. And they were friendlier to you than the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were a lot friendlier. And then we, we, it, well, we spent a couple of nights in the church over there. I think it was a Methodist church. And uh, they kept moving you around. Then it took us about three or four days to get back to the deep where the prison camp was in Germany. We had to walk across half of France and into Germany. Wasn't much left in Germany, though, except probably. Yeah. It was all. Cologne, Nuremberg, all those big cities. It was just absolutely nothing standing. Nothing for a It's like Jackson, Italy, but a lot of those places with much standing there. They're just rubble. You get 2,000 heavy bombers and 1,000 pound bombs in there, and you start dropping them, you just don't have much, <laughs> much to look forward to. Yeah. Um, so you went from, they picked you up there in the field and you, you walked, spent the night in the church. How far was it from, from where you stayed until you got to the camp? Oh, it was, it was way in Germany. Uh, we were in uh, southern FC. It took us about three days to get to uh, German field over camp. Was yeah. that anywhere near the Rhine River? Yeah, we crossed the Rhine to Cologne. And Cologne was absolutely nothing left over except the church in Cologne. It was still standing, but it was the bridges you couldn't hardly walk across. They'd been bombed completely out. And uh, it just, there was nothing left in Germany. Mm -hmm. It was completely in trouble. And, uh, 
Now you had told me one time that one of the guys that got out of the plane with you uh, was you. You had met him, or they they had him too, or yeah. Uh, and they had him in a different place, and y'all got connected up a day or two later. Well, they uh, they separated. We were together about I guess a week, ten days before we went to a processing camp for the VOWs. And that's where you, they shifted you around and put you in different areas. Uh -huh. But it was, it was pretty well organized. They knew what to do. They had enough prisoners over there. But it was, uh, it was a different situation back then. And how long were you in the POW camp? About six months. I was shot down in January, and then I was after the war in it. But it was, uh, it was about 30,000 of us in the camp, pure duty. It was liberated. Patent, patent liberated. I just talked to a fellow here the other day, uh, Julian Parker. I moved him. And, and he was, uh, he was, he was on in Normandy. He landed on yeah. day. He was telling me about a camp. Uh, he called it prison, I think. Yeah. That was on a island or, or near the Rhine River, somewhere there. And he said, uh, he said our POWs were just starved to death, just about. It. They were skinny as they could be, and uh, there was. Did that sound like that might be the same place you came out of? Well, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to tell because they shifted you around so much, but normally it's the same pattern, yeah. Right. Until you got to your final destination, and then towards the end of the war, it was so fluid, it kept moving you deeper into Germany. Okay. Where you just stayed in a, whatever, an open field or where you could uh, find shelter. But, uh, because all the, most of the camps were, they were breaking those up then, didn't know what to do with all the POWs. But they kept driving up deeper into Germany until you got to Russia. Were you, uh, what, what, did you see any mistreatment of, of uh, the Americans by, by the Germans there in the POW camp? Did you see any kind of... Uh, the, the, in the, in the camps, they, you were pretty well, but yeah, you saw some of them at times, but I never did see them just, it was more the SS troops who uh, would do more things to you than the regular guards because they were mostly old folks and the young folks were fighting the war. And, but those SS troopers, they, they wanted to go out to the prisoners most of the time. Uh-huh. And uh, so when, you, when, when Patton and his troops came in, what, what happened then? Where did you go then? We stayed right there. We told, got out of the fences down and roamed around a little bit. But you didn't want to get far because you didn't know how, when they were going to move you or what they were going to do with it. Taking 30 or 40,000 POWs. Yeah. And it, uh, but we started looking for something to eat. Yeah. But they didn't have much to eat over there anyway. So. Even for y'all? Even, even for the POW, yeah. even for the Americans? No. Okay. no. Well, um, but anything else that you remember that stands out to you about uh, your time? There? Well, it was, uh, it's amazing to see the number of people in POW camps that are from all allied countries, you know. And it was just amazing to see how, how they functioned at all. But anyway, the, uh, you never did see many guards or anything. They had, had so many folks there. The fence. They kept them pretty well in good shape, but they uh, they they were pretty strict on you. 
Did you I, ever, after the war, did you ever go back and reconnect with anybody uh, over in France, yeah, Germany? Uh, uh, I've been back, but I haven't, I didn't, I haven't seen anybody that, that you know that I knew yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was mostly uh, young children and women. You didn't see many men in Germany. They were all in the military. So yeah. it took a... Um, well, uh, Jack, when you, after you got out, what, uh, did you go back to see anybody or connect up with any of the old... I stayed in touch with one of the uh, one of the crew members, a fellow named Hap Harn, for a while. He he was he was up, lived up in, in Boston. Hap Harn. Hap Harn is his name, and, that, and we stayed in touch for probably several years. But it, that's the only one. Do y'all have any reunions or anything like that with your old? We used to. We don't have any more. All dead. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been to the to the Eighth uh, Museum in Savannah? Yeah, that's uh, we. That's quite. We have put that together, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's a nice, good job they did on the. Um, okay, how old are you all now? I'll be ninety-five, July second. Bob was ninety-six in yeah. April first. July second. That's right around the corner. Not bad. Not a couple of days. I might. I might. I, I was born at twenty five. You were born at twenty. In twenty six. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, what do y'all do now? I'm retired from McKesson Drug Company. Bob's a retired banker. <laughs> oh, well, uh, what, what do you do every day now for your just for your activities yeah. every day? I do just what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you come over here every yeah. day. Yeah, we, we do morning prayer five days a week. And uh, I play golf two days a week. I used to play golf. Uh, I don't do much of anything except take a little exercise. Hey. I, I volunteer at the hospital on Friday mornings. Hey. So still serving. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Share this with your friends, and when you see a veteran, especially one from the greatest generation, show him or her your appreciation. I'm Don Cole, with Common Sense from D.C., not Washington. God bless you, and have a great day.